Hey besties, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, then hello, welcome, I am Jazz. And if you're back here for a second or third time, then hello, welcome back, and I love you for being here. If you are one of my OG followers, then you will know that the reason I even ever got into beauty content creation is because of skincare. I am a big, big fan of skincare. I've always shared my tips, my knowledge. I love talking about skincare science. It's just, honestly, it's just one of my favorite topics ever. Skincare is such a huge topic and there are so many products out there so much knowledge so many tips that it may be hard to get started and I actually want to give you a very good basic routine that your skin will literally love so if you are looking for the best skincare guide to get started on the perfect skincare routine then you are in the right place we're gonna go ahead and just jump right in and my first topic is cleansing first off I want to start off by saying that I do not cleanse morning and night I know a lot a lot of people cleanse morning and night if that works for you that's great you keep doing that i have dehydrated dry skin so skipping cleansing in the morning is actually super beneficial for my skin i feel like it leaves my skin just more hydrated doesn't strip it away from all its natural oils and all the oils that i applied the night before also if you have oily skin you could also maybe benefit from skipping cleansing in the morning the theory is that when you're cleansing too much you're actually stripping your skin of its natural oils so think of it as your skin like freaking out and being like oh my god my skin is too dry let me make more oils hence the oily skin so try it out i know that's not true for every skin type but it could work and it doesn't hurt to try it Second point is to make sure you're always, always a double cleansing. What is double cleansing? Double cleansing is when you use an oil-based cleanser first to remove your SPF and makeup. And then you go in with your regular water cleanser, which is the one that actually like foams up and creates bubbles. I love to use oil cleansers. I love to use oil balms. I love using micellar water. Whichever type of oil cleanser works for you the best, and that's the one I recommend. Oil cleansers are also just really good at removing makeup. They're way, way better than makeup wipes, which can be really harsh for your skin. Makeup wipes have really harsh ingredients ingredients like alcohol and they're also super abrasive you're just like dragging your makeup around with the wipe while oil cleansers are actually breaking down those ingredients and making sure that you just wash them off my third point is to make sure you're using a water cleanser that is not too stripping or drying the formula here is that you don't want to use the cleanser and then say like my skin feels really tight or really dry or like you know that feeling when you can't move your skin and it just feels really like tight that is not a feeling you should be experiencing. I'm gonna leave all of my recommendations for my favorite cleansers in the description below. Also, please remember that you should not be blowing a ton of money on expensive cleansers. A good cleanser does not have to be expensive and it will get the job done regardless. Now we're moving on to step number two, which are toners or essences. For the sake of the video and to avoid confusion, we're just gonna address what a toner is and what an essence is. Toners are considered to be like an after cleanse, so just in case you didn't remove everything after your double cleanse, which should not be the case, your double cleanse should be removing everything, but toners are supposed to be like an extra cleanse. They're also supposed to help adjust the pH level of your skin or neutralize it after using a cleanser. But that's kind of outdated because cleansers nowadays are supposed to be pH friendly and pretty gentle for your skin anyways. Now essences come after toners. They're more hydrating. They're thicker consistency than toners. I saw someone once refer to it as a watered down serum, which is pretty much what it is. And these are also way more soothing, calming, moisturizing, hydrating for your skin versus a toner which can have exfoliating properties. Which brings me to my next point. Do I get an exfoliating toner or do I get a hydrating toner or essence? Like which one should I go for? That is totally up to your skin type. And if you decide you wanna start exfoliating, which is highly recommended, it's good for all skin types. Usually what I do is I have two different exfoliating toners that I will use maybe twice a week. But my essences, which are more hydrating and soothing and calming, I use literally every single day twice a day oh excuse me now moving on to the next point are they necessary and the answer is absolutely not double cleansing isn't necessary toners and essences aren't necessary serums aren't necessary the only thing that's truly necessary in your skincare routine is SPF. If you want to go beyond that, it's cleansing, moisturizer, and SPF. But that's the thing about skincare. Everything is kind of supplemental, but it's good for your skin. There's no harm in using it. It's like, why not add it to your skincare routine? The last point is that it can also help absorb the rest of your skincare products better. 
I saw someone once compare their skin to a sponge. If you just pour water on a dry sponge, more likely than not, the water is just gonna kind of bounce off the sponge. But if you pour water into a sponge that's already been damped up, then the water just kind of sinks into the sponge and the sponge absorbs the water. It's kind of the same thing with your skincare routine. You just don't want to be applying your products on like dry skin that you just cleanse. So essences and toners are probably a great move. Okay, we're gonna jump into to the next part of your skincare routine which are your serums i could make like probably an hour-long video on serums there are so so many different kinds of serums out there for example if you want something to target dark spots or hyperpigmentation you would look for a serum with azelaic acid or alpha arbutene versus if you want a serum to help you stay more hydrated or help with fine lines you would look for a serum with hyaluronic acid but one serum that i do recommend for everyone is a moisture barrier support serum these are serums that contain ingredients like ceramides, hyaluronic acid, some healthy oils, etc. I definitely recommend that in almost everyone's skincare routine. No, not almost everyone's skincare routine. I will say that serums are probably the more expensive part of your whole skincare routine, but they are also the most important, like one of the most important parts. Like if you're going to spend so much money on a cleanser, I'd rather you spend that money on a serum, you know? So serums come after toners and essences, but they come before moisturizers. Now we're going to jump into the next part of our skincare routine, which are moisturizers. I know a lot of people that skip moisturizers and to be completely honest i was one of those people don't know what was going through my head because i have dry skin type and i've always had dry skin type but anyways i have repented for my sins and now i use moisturizer literally every day twice a day if you think you have an oily skin type and that's why you should maybe skip moisturizer then you're actually wrong you can look for a moisturizer that goes hand in hand with your oily skin and won't make your skin feel oilier, if that makes sense. There are a lot of ingredients that go into moisturizers. I'm obviously not gonna get to touch all of them, but there are three different types of ingredients. You have emollients, you have humectants, and you have occlusive. The first level of ingredients are humectants. These are ingredients that draw water from the air into your skin. They're super lightweight. They absorb into your skin really easy. They're really good for oily skin, and these are ingredients like hyaluronic acid or glycerin i used to use a very lightweight moisturizer because it just left such a nice like glow on my skin but that is not the moisturizer that my skin needed it needed a heavier thicker one then you have your second tier which are emollient ingredients these are thicker and heavier ingredients and they're usually better for drier skin types think lightweight oils like rosehip oil or ceramides and these are the types of ingredients that i usually like to go for and then you have occlusive ingredients which are way thicker than the other two i just mentioned these are ingredients like thicker heavier oils butters silicones etc these ingredients are way better at keeping water from evaporating from your skin and yes water does evaporate from your skin that's why there's such thing as dehydrated skin when water evaporates from your skin that's called transepidermal loss and i am not a scientist i've just done a lot of research so i kind of know what these names are i know they're kind of crazy this doesn't mean just drink more water although that will help but that doesn't mean that it will fix the problem completely and if you think dehydrated skin doesn't matter it actually matters a lot your skin feels really tight you see like little fine lines. I actually struggle with dehydrated skin a lot. I will say that I have heard that using more occlusive ingredients can lead to more breakouts. Um, some people say that it clogs their pores more. I've honestly never had problems like that too often. So I will say that every skin is different and what works for you might not work for others. So just test, test the products out and see if it works for you. After moisturizers, I like to go in with my next step, which are oils. I feel like there's this misconception about oils and how they will break you out, but that's not necessarily true. It just really, really, truly depends on your skin type and which oil you're using. Favorite top two oils ever are grapeseed oil and rosehip oil. Fun fact, that is actually what inspired me to start my own business. I loved oils so much. I wanted to create my own cocktail of oils because I love grapeseed oil, I love calendula oil, I love a little bit of tea tree oil. That actually inspired me to create my very first product. I used to have very dry to the point where it was kind of flaky skin. I had a dehydrated skin. Like it was not it was not a look. And that all changed when I started incorporating this oil. I get a lot of comments now saying your skin is so glowy, your skin is this, your skin is that. And honestly, naturally, like if I don't put on any products, obviously like it's not glowy. It's actually like 
pretty dry because that's just how it wants to be but after layering all my products and really sealing it off with an oil that is where my true glow comes in i mentioned the term trans epidermal loss earlier oils help to stop that from happening oils just have a ton of benefits they can minimize texture they can minimize acne hyperpigmentation dark spots the reason i never scar when i like frantically pick at my skin is because i always always layer an oil on top oils have amazing healing properties that's always been known and i know i just said that oils can even minimize acne and you might be asking how or why so rosehip oil contains something called linoleic acid i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right don't quote me but people with acne usually have a lower percentage of linoleic acid and this might be what's actually causing acne so incorporating a rosehip oil into your routine can literally fight off acne I want to say three years ago or two years ago on TikTok when like rosehip oil went super viral and people were like, I have no more acne. I'm like, yes, exactly. I mean, oils can help. I definitely, definitely encourage you to add one into your routine, even if you have an oily skin type, because like I said before, your skin type can actually be really dry and it's trying to overcompensate by overproducing oils. So adding an oil into your routine can minimize your oil production and just sort of balance things out. All the steps I just ran through are pretty much a really good solid skincare routine for me. We do double cleansing, we do toners and essences, serums, moisturizers, oils, and then in the mornings, obviously, obviously, we do an SPF. If you're still skipping SPF, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, this is not a, this is not a threat, but I will find you. Because why, why are we, why are we skipping SPF? Everyone should be wearing SPF. The sun does not joke around, okay? Yeah, Skin does, does not joke around, like it just does him. not. Definitely, definitely make sure you're using an SPF in your routine. Your skin will thank you for not skipping SPF. You will have way, way less wrinkles in the future, way less dark spots, way less hyperpigmentation. Did you know that scars, when like when you scar up, the sun is making them like darker. The sun makes them worse. Add one into your routine. Do not neglect it. It only takes less than a minute a day and honestly, it has improved my skin a ton. Now that we got through all of the skincare essentials and what my routine mostly looks like, there are other like outliers in skincare. For example, an eye cream. Do you need an eye cream? You probably don't. I use one because there's no harm in using one. And I mean, look at these, like, look at these eye bags. I need an eye cream. But most of the time, a company will repackage literally just a moisturizer into a little container and sell it to you for $40. Make sure when you're buying an eye cream, you're buying one that you know is going to work. For example, Inky List has a caffeine eye cream that I use, I love it, I feel like it actually works. And there's science behind why it works for your under eyes. Another outlier in skincare I think is retinols. I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not licensed, I'm not a professional. If I'm speaking to a young audience and I'm talking like very young, I would not recommend a retinol to you because you're just very young, you don't need a retinol. But if you have acne, it might help. So again, go see a dermatologist. I'm not a professional, but a retinol might help. Now, if I'm talking to an older audience, I'd still recommend to go see a dermatologist. I'm only 23, so I think I'm still pretty young. I only use a retinol twice a week. Slowly, slowly incorporating one into my routine. I also don't use a very strong like retinol that you would get from a dermatologist. One. Because let's be honest, I'm too broke to go see a dermatologist. They are expensive. And two, I just don't think my skin is ready for like a crazy strong retinol. So I just use one that you can buy from like online or in Sephora. And I just use it twice a week. Very gentle, very good for my skin. That pretty much finishes off my beginner's guide to skincare. Anytime I have a conversation with someone and they want to start a really good skincare routine, I basically tell them everything I just told you. And again, like I mentioned before, I'll leave my recommendations in the description below. I think I'm gonna use just one link so you can just see everything categorized very neatly, very nicely. I will say that this is a commission link that I'm gonna be putting in the description. So every time you purchase something, I do get a small commission from it. And if you choose to shop through it and support me, then thank you so, so much. These are all literally my favorite products 
But that is it for this video. Please, 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 if you liked any of the tips or recommendations I gave you, hit the like or subscribe button to support my channel some more. And I wish all of you, all of you, a clear, but more than that, a healthy skin journey. Okay, love you, bye.